Good day, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. So, the big day has come. The farmers co op has called. Today is the day to pick up the chickens. So, what we need to do, even though the chicken coop is pretty much ready, it needs to be moved on site, however, um, we need to get this brooder ready. The chicks are going to spend probably at least a week in the house with us while they grow a little bit and uh, get a bit tougher before we put them outside. The weather's been great, the sun is shining, temperature is above 20 Celsius, but we're still going to be on the side of caution and, uh, and use a brooder in the house. So what we have here, I got this yesterday. This is a Sterilite container. It is 104 liters or 110 quarts and uh, I think it's a perfect shape, lots of room, deep enough so that the chicks can't jump out and we're going to set this up as our brooder. So the first step in setting up our brooder are some wood shavings. Alright, so we got a uh, two square foot bag of uh, wood shavings here and so first thing we're going to do is cut these open and we're going to put probably you know, four to six inches in the bottom of the coop, or the bottom of the brooder, sorry. So that should be pretty good. So now that we got the wood shavings into the brooder, we got probably three more things we need to put in there. One is a heat source, some water, and some food. That's pretty much all the necessities of life for these chicks. So instead of using a heat lamp, which some people use, uh, in general, using a heat lamp around wood shavings and in-house uh, when you're dealing at high wattages is just not a good idea. So what we did, we've invested in a brooder hen, which is an electric version of a hen for giving off heat. So the brooder hen, this is the top. Now, if the chicks get on top of this, they might make a mess of it, but that's not a big deal. They're only chicks easy enough to clean off. But below, we have a heater plate. And this is going to give off a gentle heat, and the chicks will find their way under here, just like they would a mother hen, and stay warm that way. The biggest thing, though, is to adjust the height. You want it just high enough so the chicks can get in there, but you also need to adjust the amount of heat. If you find that they're going under there and they don't stay under there for very long and they're coming back out overheated, you probably got it too low and, uh, and it's giving off too much heat to them. So you got to raise it up a little bit. So we got four legs, little push clips here. Just push the legs in, let go of the clips, and you can set your height that way. There are some graduated marks on the side of the legs. So you can kind of figure out how many clicks down it is for each leg to get them to the same spot. So we'll even this out later if it's not even. This is just for Dem demonstration at this point and we're going to get it set up uh, and warming before we go get the chicks. You want your brooder ready to go for when you get home with your chicks so there's no delay and they get cold or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So when you're setting your legs remember as well you want to accommodate for the, the amount of wood shavings you have. So if you got you know two to four inches of wood shavings or four to six you're probably going to want to add that height onto the legs. 
So we'll start up relatively high and we'll adjust it as necessary. If the chicks are spending a lot of time under it, it shows that they're cold. If they're not spending much time under there at all, they're too warm. So you're going to have to find that, that nice zone, okay? And that'll fit in Perfect. perfectly into our little brooder. Next on the list, the feeder. Alright, so all these are just Amazon purchases. This was just a feeder combination. You get your bottle that you fill up with feed and your little guard to keep them from climbing into the food. These holes are small enough that they can fit their beaks in, but they can't get their legs in to scratch the food out or uh, hopefully not be pooping down into the food. So I'll <laughs> pass that off to these guys we along got with. Food. Right here we have a five kilogram bag of starter feed for the chicks. All right, and uh, we'll let these guys open that up and fill up the container. Good thing we're doing this outside. Mm -hmm. They're spilling it. Okay. Try doing the play safe to do it. Be careful when you have this much of food. As you saw, I'm spilling it. Okay. So, keep filling. Pull it all the way up. Portrait awesome. Yeah. Mommy's holding it so you can use your hand to make a funnel. Yeah, I'm really even for some. I didn't need a two bags after all. There we go. I'm just gonna top it off. No, that's good. My hand. There we go. Bottom. So our bottle, bottle is filled as you I, can see. Yeah, the bottle is filled, so we'll screw the, the base back on. The base is coming on. And you want so some in there? You there you put it in there. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, you need to tip it over fast, so um, none of the feed comes out of it. Yeah. So there we go. The feed has come down through and already spread out into the feeding area, and that'll gravity feed down as they eat what's below. Alright, so we'll put the feeder down in one corner. We only got four chicks coming, so there won't be a big fight around the sides. So we got at least one, two, three, four feeding areas out towards the front, and we can put that in the corner like so. So the next thing is the waterer. Now, at our house here, we are on artesian well. So we got no worries about chlorine or fluoride in our water, mm -hmm. and we've and we've had it tested, Daddy. and it's okay. Daddy. So uh, we can just fill this up from the tap without any concerns. Now, if you are on city water, um, pretty much up to you if you uh, want to give them water straight from the tap or chlorinated water. But if you want to, you can uh, take chlorinated water. Put it in a bucket somewhere and pretty much just let it sit and the chlorine will kind of off gas out of the uh, water and you can also get uh, i know when i had fish in the past you can get chlorine uh, neutralizing tablets so that might be an idea as well if you're uh, either a bit concerned at all but i would think the chickens would be fine on whatever water you give them so we'll go to the tap and fill this up.
All right, so now that we have our water filled up, we'll pass that over this way. The big thing with these waterers is the base, you need to keep it level, okay? You know, there's an exit point right here, a little hole for the water to make its way out. And then the static pressure of the water in this bowl will keep the rest of this water from pouring down into the dish. So if this isn't level, and it's spilling out over the side, it'll just create a continuous flow and empty your bottle into your brooder. So be very careful with this. Uh, tip it over fast and keep it level. Uh-huh. You want to tip it over really fast, just like the feeder. Just like the feeder, that's right. Why do you think it's good? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of All right, so two hands on it. And she's gonna tip it over nice and fast without dropping it. Nice and secure. Keep it level. There we go. So the water is a little slow coming out, so you need to wait a little bit for it to come out. Like you saw, um, I got a little bit dripping, so you need to um, be a little careful. All right, so as you can see, the water has filled the tray up and has stopped filling further just because the atmospheric pressure pushing down on the water here prevents more from flowing out. Now, the trick is get this down into the brooder, not to mention the brooder back into the house, while keeping this as level as possible. Now, another thing as well that I never thought of before we started this video is that you want your water up elevated a little bit and you may want some marbles or something put in there so the chicks can't climb in and drown. But you want it also elevated off of your wood shavings to keep them from climbing up into it and pooping in it and getting it messy full of wood shavings. So we'll find some kind of appropriate thing to uh, prop that up on before we put the chicks in there. But this is your basic layout for a brooder. You plug in your hot plate, your, your mother hen. We got food, we got water. So overall, we are ready to go get some chicks. So we'll, uh, we'll follow up with you guys while we go to get those chicks. And, uh, and we'll show you the process of putting them into the brooder. And at that point in time, you'll see what we've managed to come up with for that water bottle as well. All right. So until we get back to you, see you in a flash. All right, just a quick update before we go to get the chicks. This is what I came up with for the waterer. It's just three pieces of cedar. This is part of the, uh, remember the Mother's Day raised garden bed that I did? Well, this here is uh, three quarter inch by five and a half pieces, or one by six. And that's just gonna be, what we're gonna do is just dig a hole for it. I'm just going to put these right in the corner. So I've made it tall enough so that at least an inch and a half, say, is, is in the wood shavings, okay? So if we're in that two to four inch range for wood shavings. I'll put that in the corner, fill it back in around. All right, and now, watch it. I'm going to get the water. I'm going to lay it on top of the box. There you go. So Just like the so. water is going to stay on top of these blocks so it stays level. That's right. So it'll stay level. It'll stay elevated. We can probably pile up a few more wood shavings so mm -hmm. that the chicks can get a bit up closer to it. But overall, this should be a good setup for the chicks. All right, so now we're gonna get in the truck and head to get the chicks. We're all ready. Bye. All right, everybody, we are on the way to get the chicks right now. We're probably a few kilometers away from the co-op. So, given the whole uh, sickness that we've been uh, dealing with as a world, they, uh, they just got drive-through service. So one of the things they requested was that we bring a box of some kind to put the chicks in. So, 
my daughter's back there. She has a lovely shoe box for us. And we took the time to cut some holes in that for, uh, for breathing and all that good stuff. So uh, anyways, we'll have the box ready to go and get our four chicks. I don't know if I've mentioned before, but the four chicks, we're getting two uh, red oh, six links and two leghorns. And anytime I think of leghorn, of course I think of foghorn, leg, foghorn leghorn and, uh, and the coyote. So uh, anyways, we shall see. And uh, we'll check back in with you guys when we get to the co-op. So this is our local farmer's co-op. And uh, I'm going to double back and I turn around because there is a massive lineup right now. So I think we're probably not the only ones to... Uh, we're probably not the only ones to be getting chickens today. Actually, I can pretty much guarantee it. So by the looks of the lineup, we may be in for a little bit of a wait. But this is the time they told us to come, between 4 and 6 in the evening. And we'll, uh, so we'll get over there now and get in line. Do a little bit of urban off-roading here to uh, get us off the main road, and this will be our position in line. So as you can see here, we got a whole lot of people in line. And we got people out on their feet as well. We'll see if we get any further directions on how they want us to proceed. So that's it for now. We're in the lineup. Chickens abound. Sure. You got some cute little chicks. Can they see that? Yeah, Daddy, open the door and show you. Let me hold them. Yeah, you'll hold them on the way home. Chicks, right? Oh my god. Chicks. I don't need a sand because I'll see one right on the road. And I need to hold them on the way home. No. Sissy's gonna hold on to them, and then you'll help me put them into the box when we get home. No, I don't. I want to get them. I'm gonna in hold this on box. to them. Okay? I'm gonna leave them in this box. Oh, we got them in the big box that we got. Yeah. All right, we'll pass it over, Sissy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll pass it over, Sissy. Not yet, we're gonna start driving. All right, we are home. The brooder's all ready. The electric mother hand is plugged in. Water's here on a bit of a pedestal. Feed is there. Make sure there's no wood chips in the feed. Even though I've already seen the chicks uh, nibble at a little bit of wood shavings. So there we go. 
Guys, open them up. Let's see the chickens. Mm. Oh, Alright. So what we got here, we got two red six links and two white leghorns. Can I touch them? Yep, you can pet them. Alright, so first thing, I'm going to get the camera down a little bit closer and we're going to transfer these guys into the brooder. Alright, so when you get your new chicks, they've been living off their yolk sac ever, ever since birth, okay? They've had a multi-day journey to get here and, you know, it's very hot out. It's 27 degrees Celsius here today. Up as much as 30 with the humid X. And so what we're going to do now, first thing is I'm going to take one of these little leghorns. I'm going to take his beak. Alright, I'm going to take his beak and I'm going to give a little dip in the water. Just the beak so that he sips a little bit of water. And there we go, we see him drink. Now, now he knows where the water is. So I'm going to do that with every bird. There we go. See him swallow a little bit of water. I want to do this one. Oh, Daddy will do these, honey, because you don't want to drown them by mistake. They don't want them to stay in there. There we go. So already you see that they're finding a the feet. Okay, it's okay. They want them. All right, here's the red sex link. Do the same thing. Little dip of the beak into the water. Watch them drink. There we go. And there we are. Transfer is complete. Mom, you need to take them back in this box. Mom, you need to take them back in this box. There you go. Come over on this side, Gabe. Gabe, pick them up. Watch them up. There you see him pick, picking up the food. See him eating. I want to pick them up. No, no picking them up. We gotta let them get their food. They're hungry. They're very hungry. So hungry and thirsty after all you their can, traveling. You can pet them though. Go and drink them. Yeah. I'm gonna move this one over. I'm gonna move that one over here because it's a little bit like dusty. Yeah. Or We're just gonna leave them. Let them do what they're doing. You can touch them and pet them. Can you do that? Yeah, you can do that. They just love me. They love me. Already. Yeah, but now don't keep on petting them. Let them do their eating as well. You don't want to bother them too get, much until they're... You can't get on top of him. Until they're caught up on their reserves. Oh! oh he's going in can there! Can you in the mother hen? Yeah. He's going to... Oh. He's going to look around, see what he can find. That's mama hen. But they got the, they got the feed figured mama out. Mama hen. I definitely got, except for that middle guy, he's picking up the wood chips. Over here! Oh. Look, look! Right here. They move him, him water, can huh? we move him where, where he no, wants no. to go? Dad, can we like, move him over here? Oh no, we're going to let him do what they need to do, honey. Why? Because they're learning. They're little babies and they got to learn now where the food is, where the water is, and how to get it. I want him to Drink the water. Then we move. You're so cute. It's hard to help at all. Can we just do this in the box? And lift them up and ask them to get them to something that you want to go? We're going to let them learn how to get to the water and the food. Let's see if this one figures out the water. Look at There you go. Oh, he almost went to the water. What do you have, sweetie? I don't think he wants the water. All of them figured out the food, Three. except that little guy right there. Oh, well, they all got it figured out. Oh, there's she. There's that dog. That guy's sharing. Uh -huh. Hello, Sam. I, I don't believe it's it. wrong. And they're here? Nope. Come on, don't. So this is our first little chicken that's caught on to how to drink. That's Becky. This is Becky. They're all getting named already. Names have fluctuated a little bit. I want to touch. So hopefully Becky will teach the rest of the crowd how to drink the water. We've dipped her beaks a couple of times. Look, 
Mario. Thank you. So hoping that one will learn from the other. Maybe the two leghorns now will be the drinking buddies. There we go, Becky's drinking it down. Mm -hmm. Good job, Becky. Well, if everyone will pay attention to Becky, they'll all learn how to drink water. Alright, so, so far so good. These guys are adapting well. They're definitely hungry. They haven't stopped at the feeder. And they're learning about the electric mother hen going under there and then coming back out again. Pecky got close to it. But he went so away. hopefully they're all going to do just fine. And we'll keep you guys updated. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. No. Nope. Alright, so just a quick little update. You can see they're all gathered around. We got some good drinking going on. We got some good drinkers going on here now. So as of today, the names are... We got Becky with a dot on her head. We got Mario, the other leghorn, even though it's a girl. And then we got the one with two stripes, the red sex link right here. This one is Pecky. And then the brown one is Donkey Kong. All right, so that's all we got. We got Becky and Mario and Pecky and Donkey Kong. They released the other <laughs> one drink. They released Donkey Kong having another sip. And these them have another sip? Yeah, yeah. we get them So, so far, the... And Birds are doing Dad. excellent. They've all Dad. found the water, and Daddy. as you see, Dad. taking drinks. Dad. And they're all eating well and drinking well, and they're also having little turns in under the electric mother hand. We actually got uh, Becky going under there right now, and she'll go on. And there goes Mario and Pecky. So they're all going in for a quick little warm up. And there goes Donkey Kong. So we got a group huddle under the electric mother. And uh, so far so good. Hopefully they all survive. Hopefully they stay healthy. Kids are excited as could be. There we go. They're all warmed up and coming back out again. So I, I think uh, I think we're doing okay. All right, everybody. So that is going to conclude this video. We successfully got our four chicks, they're home, they're in the brooder, they're eating, they're drinking. So far so good. So hopefully fate is on our side and we have four healthy chickens and that continues to stay that way. We will be realistic as well and know that sometimes chicks just don't make it. But I, I think we got a good little batch here. Uh, Donkey Kong might be a little bit iffy. just. Maybe he's just sleepy. He's had his uh, he's had his lids closed a lot, just kind of standing there with the lids closed. So maybe he's just sleeping. But he is eating and drinking. So I'd say they're probably just tired from the road trip, and hopefully they'll recuperate soon and uh, continue growing. Stay tuned to the channel for a big chicken coop update. Pretty much almost complete and ready to be released, and. Uh, and that should conclude the chicken coop build series actually because these guys in a week or two are going to need somewhere to go so time is at a crunch and it's not standing still all right so until next time hope you're happy hope you're healthy take care of each other and peace, peace out, out. Peace out.